All right, hello again, everyone. It has been a hot minute, but I've heard the people crying out for mediocre Age of Sigmar content, and I've heard your pleas. I'm back. Here I am. I'm, I'm ready to just grind out this content, baby. Uh, I've actually been sitting on pictures and stuff from a GT for like three weeks <laughs> and feeling guilty that I have not been making a video about it. Um, so I am happy to be finally doing this and getting it off my to-do list. And I'm excited to talk about some Age of Sigmar again. Uh, fourth edition is out, obviously, and it's good and it's exciting. Um, so hooray for that. Um, yeah, I might do, might do another video just about more general fourth edition stuff and thoughts, um, just because I don't want this one to be too long. Um, so maybe I'll just focus on the GT for this one. Um, yeah, I went to uh, Age of Sigmar Grimnir's Vengeance 2024 uh, up in Spit Pittsburgh, um, just outside of Pittsburgh, actually, uh, in Coropolis. Um, this was like three weekends ago. I went up with my buddies Roger and Nick G. Um, we had high hopes and dreams. Um, I was a little disappointed in myself, not in my placing, but in my attitude. Um, so this was obviously like, we'd signed up for this like months in advance. We just, the first like fourth edition event we found that was going to be GT, we signed up for. Because we were like, oh man, the, the edition's going to be super new. This is like the weekend after it comes out. It's going to be a whole, whole big old shit show. Nobody's going to know what's good. It's just going to be like the Wild West out there. And it's going to be great and was excited to just try out the new edition and have things be crazy and weird. Um, and I felt like there were one or two games where I kind of lost that spirit of just like, you know, this doesn't matter too much. This is, uh, you know, this is all brand new. People hardly even know the rules at this point. Um, so there were, there were one or two points where I like, got a little saltier than I should have been about just like something being a little unbalanced or whatever I perceived it to be um, and lost a little bit of that spirit of just like, of course some things are going to be broken and unbalanced and was and was too sad about my man's dying. Um, so yeah, despite that, it was fun. Um, it was a little bit of a weird tournament, not just because of um, like the rules being new and stuff, but like I'm sure partially because all the rules were new. Um, it was just, like, it was it was run very casually. I mean, there were, like, 32 people. So it was a good-sized tournament. Um, it was run very casually. Like, there was never actually a player pack. Um, and it seemed like a lot of people there were, like, local and kind of already knew what the schedule for a tournament there would be and things. So, like, we kind of had to a ask a couple times, like, hey, when does, when does the next round start? When does the round start in the morning? Um, we kind of, like, assumed that, Sunday morning would start earlier than Saturday, which it did. Um, it started at 9 instead of 10, but, like, we were kind of fighting to, to get information <laughs> that we needed uh, now and then. But uh, everybody there was, like, super chill and super cool. Um, so, honestly, like, there weren't any problems, really. Like, it kind of ran itself. That's not to, like, you know, detract from uh, the people who did run it. Um, ben and Seth did a good job of wrangling people. Um, they are not, neither of them are like the store owner or anything. I think they were just helping like run the Sigmar tournament. So props to them, uh, for helping out. Um, yeah, it was a good time. I would go back up there again. Uh, it was like three or four hours from where I am, uh, currently. And I think next time, like we kind of said next time we'd probably stay in like Pittsburgh proper and drive the like 20 minutes out to where the venue was. Um, rather than we, we stayed like in the venue that was nearest to the, um, sorry, we stayed in the hotel nearest to the venue. Um, like I said, like most people were local, so weren't staying in hotels at all. Um, but there really like, there wasn't a whole lot right near the venue and right near the hotel, uh, in terms of like choices for restaurants and things. So like Saturday we ended up kind of driving far away anyway, far away, like 20 minutes for, for dinner anyway. Um. So at that point, like, maybe we should have just gotten a hotel in Pittsburgh, and I've never really been to Pittsburgh, so <laughs> could have seen the city. Anyway, you don't care about all of that. I'm here to talk about Age of Sigmar, not ramble about hotels. Um, so let's get into 
the actual games. Um, my list, I was hemming and hawing for like two weeks. I mean, really a week once we had like points and things um, about what to take. Because I have Slaves to Darkness, I have OBR, I have Cruel Boys, and I have Stormcast. And at the point that lists were going to be due, I had gotten in like two games with OBR, a game with Slaves to Darkness, and a game with Cruel Boys. And kind of had this sense, so this is one of the exciting things about New Edition, right? Is that different things are good now than were good in third edition. Um, so for example, every, you know, obviously everybody needs endless spells now, which is a big change. Um, but because of that, I like, I kind of felt like the lists I wanted to make for Slaves, OBR, or Cruel Boys, um, for all of those, I kind of wanted like two to ten, oh, I don't know, like two to four units that I don't already have, right? So I was like, for Cruel Boys, I want Monster Hunters, like two or three units probably. I don't have any. For Slaves, it's time for me to paint Varengard. I also want, you know, I wanted to be running a Gaunt Summoner, a um, couple other things I don't have right now. Um, for OBR, I had just, I'd gotten like two games in and just like wasn't feeling them yet. Um, and didn't really have a good read. I think those were the first games I played, so, like, really didn't have a read of the edition. And just, like, I was kind of turned off from the OBR for my first couple games. Um, so I ended up saying, screw it, I'm going to go play five games with the army I haven't even tried yet in this edition so far. Uh, so I took my Stormcast. And I said, if any, if there's ever a time to get Big Papa Karzai out of my system, uh, it's you know, to this GT, where everything is new. I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to win, but I'm not super tryharding. Like, now's the time to bust out Karzai and see if he's he's playable. Um, and I had already... I knew, I was like, Krondus, if you're going to bring a big dragon, like, Krondus is by far the better dragon, I think. Um, being a two cast at plus two to cast is absurd. Um, there is very little plus two to cast in the game right now. Like, Krondus is good. Um, I mean, he's a ton of points, obviously. He's a big dragon. But uh, the game I faced against him, he seemed good. And probably better than Karzai. But screw it. I want to take Karzai. Um, and just like my other three armies I mentioned, like, there's stuff that's probably good in Stormcast now that I don't own. And a lot of what I do own just seems legitimately terrible. Um, so, like, Annihilators, for example, I think are just completely unplayable on my first read. Um, you don't get, you don't get the 7-inch drop down anymore with the Imperitant. The Imperitant has to drop near the action, and then if you drop near him, you can move D3. But the bigger things are, they're still move 4, so they're still slow as hell if they don't, like, charge in the turn they come down. And... They don't get inherent reroll to charges the turn they come down anymore. So that's out. So it's harder to make the charges. And previously, you could not redeploy off of a setup. So previously, you could just drop down within seven. You had a rerollable seven, guaranteed. You know, it's not guaranteed. The Your rerollable seven inch charge is guaranteed to be a rerollable seven inch charge, which is a good chance of getting the charge off. Now, Every, no matter where you drop down, no matter where you end up, how close you end up, the enemy can always redeploy one unit away from you. So if you're trying, you know, if you're dropping into like three units, you're, you'll, you'll probably get into something. But like if you're trying to drop in and pick up your opponent's monster or something, you can just redeploy their monster away, and suddenly you're on a non-rerollable like ten-inch charge, and then the annihilators have a four-inch move and they just sit there. It seems bad. Seems a lot worse than they were for, like, not much less points than what they were. Uh, or maybe even a little more than they ended up at the end of 3rd edition. Um, and I've got nine Annihilators and, you know, the Imperitant and stuff. That was kind of the core of what I always ran. So I was just very sad. So instead, I took no Annihilators. Took the Big Dragon. I took Karzai. Uh, two Storm Drake Guard just to eat up a lot of points. Because, <laughs> like I said, I, don't, I didn't have that much stuff I wanted to take. 
Uh, I took 10 Vindictors. I'll talk about that thought process in a second. And then I took the Knight Arcanum, um, who I thought has play now much more than he used to. Because um, he has, he's only a one cast, but he has the inherent, um, he has an inherent plus one to cast spells to summon manifestations, which is great, uh, since manifestations are so important. And he also gets plus one to banish manifestations, which also seems great. Uh, and then he's also got a little cute little um, ability where manifestations can't end a move within three of him. So he's never getting charged by a grave tide. A grave tide is never tagging him in combat with its little move thing. Like that, it seemed. It's a very small zone, obviously, but it, it seemed like it could be cute. Um, so I had the Knight Arcanum. He had my uh, my stuff. Uh, I don't think I ever really remembered to use either of these. <laughs> There's so much other stuff to remember. Um, I don't think Null Pendant ever came up. I don't think it ever would have mattered. And then I think I just didn't really remember Envoy of the Heavens. Um, so yeah, to round things out, I have a Chariot. I wanted it to be good, but I think it's bad. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Andrasta, I think maybe... I don't, I don't know. She might be fairly costed. Um, she did some work. I think I played her poorly, but like I think I think Andrasta is legit. Um, I finally painted my three Ether Wings that I've had in a box for two years uh, that came with the Raptors. Um, Ether Wings were fantastic. Having a 12-inch move, 90-point little shitbag unit that can go to take the flanks or what have you um, is awesome. And them giving plus one to hit to the long strikes was also amazing. Uh, and then the long strikes, obviously they're they're different than they used to be. Um, but still a really solid unit. And in talking to Roger and Nick, like on the way home, you know, we were debriefing and talking about games and stuff. Um, we, th we were also like Roger was saying, especially, and I agreed that like having six, a, a reinforced unit of six long strikes with counter shoot in the opponent's turn being a thing that exists feels like kind of a core thing that you want to make a good Stormcast list now at this point. Um, <laughs> shocking, third edition, right? The long strikes, double shooting six long strikes was a thing then. Six long strikes are a thing now. Uh, they still double shoot, it's just now it's in the opponent's turn. And if the ether wings are close by, they're canceling out the minus one to hit from counter shooting or just in your turn saving your CP. So that little combo is feels super nice. Um, I said I was going to talk about the Chariot. I I liked the Chariot in third, and I desperately wanted to like the Chariot now because it's a cool model. I like the way mine is painted. It feels it just feels like a cool thing that I want to use. Um, and it just it's not there right now. It just feels it felt bad. It they they, they decreased the damage it can do just through its like melee profiles um mostly because the mounts i think lost two attacks i think they went from six to four and obviously now they hit on fours because they're like you know mount companion things um and the rend i think went from two to one so like the the mount attacks got worse i think the I think the spear attack maybe also got slightly worse. The, the big thing was the mounts losing multiple things across their melee profile. Um, so it kind of lost that little bit of minor hittiness that it had where it could like brawl with at least little chap units. <laughs> Although I did have it get outfought by chameleon skinks even in um, third edition. Um, Hunters of Huanchi, sorry. Um, so, so yeah, it's melee profile is worse, and then it's, like, its main thing that it does, like, its main ability is when you power through with it, it can move an extra d6 inches, and it can do, it does an extra d3 damage. So, like, that sounds good, and that sounds cool. I'm going to charge into something, I'll do, like, the two up d3 mortals impact hits, maybe I'll fight a little bit, and then I'll power through to do two d3 more mortals, and can go, like, you know, 10 plus d6 inches. That, that all seems good, but then you have to remember that to, to basically do its core thing, use its core ability that makes this a cool unit, its whole identity, 
requires a command point every single time you want to do it to power through. And command points are so tight this edition that it feels super bad to be like, oh, I'm going to save a CP so I can charge in with my chariot and do an extra D3 mortals when I power through and do my two D3 mortals. Like, it's not the worst thing in the world, right? But for that to be the core identity for this unit is is a little sad because you know what one CP would be way better spent for? Is double shooting six long strikes in your opponent's turn, right? Like there are there are far more impactful things you can do with a command point in this game than power through a chariot. In most cases. There are probably edge cases where you want to, you know, you can do some cute play where like you're gonna charge a small hero and the 2d3 will kill him, and then you're gonna power through and get 10 inches over to like an objective that you wanted to contest or something. Like there's things you can do. I'm not saying it's completely bad, but like compared to other things in the game, I, I was disappointed in the chariot. Um just general other overview. Like the dragons were good. Um the Lightning Echelon, I think I rolled them striking first like one or two times. Um, they were like a solid fine. Their little shooting attack is decent. Like, between them shooting... The, the couple turns over the course of the tournament where like I actually got to like shoot everything, like concentrate fire, did feel pretty strong. Like Karzai's breath weapon, the Storm Drake breath weapon, Indrasta's spear into a monster, the long strikes... Like, I shot a great unclean one with everything, and it did a lot of damage, and it felt good. Um, Karzai is pretty much still just Karzai. Like, he's pretty smashy. He's got more wounds now, but, like, there's still plenty of things that are just going to burn him down, like, real quick. Um, and my my big, my big brain play that I was going to do... Um, so I have the Ten Vindictors... And they were going to... My plan was to like kind of keep Karzai with them, have them bodyguard Karzai, so that he could be handing out minus two attacks to something. Um, so minus one built into his profile he can hand out to somebody, and then with the bodyguard General's Handbook rule, if the Vindictors are within six, um, wholly within six, hand out another one, because he's the general. And like, I don't know. It seemed really cool, but then like you're, really, you're kind of tying... Karzai to the Vindictors and kind of keeping them together, which limits you. Um, like, the games I did better were more Karzai kind of, like, running off on his own and, like, holding down a flank by himself against, like, weaker things. Um, so, I don't know. I, I just... I wanted to live the dream, and I didn't live the dream on that front. It was, like... I don't know. It was a cute idea, but, like, not worth it. Um, you are... You would be much better off having six long strikes in the general's regiment that get plus one plus one against anything in the enemy's general's regiment. Um, that that would, that felt like it would be more impactful than having to keep Karzai next to ten Vindictors. I also thought ten Vindictors would be a little more durable than they ended up being. Um, you know, it's 20 wounds on a three up. It's not nothing, but like it still ended up dying pretty fast to like the more scary things in the game. Um, like, you know, six ogre gluttons or whatever. <laughs> Slight exaggeration, but we'll get into that. Um, yeah, so that was the list. Oh, and I took Morbid Conjuration, um, because I already had a... <laughs> I just kind of lucked into taking the best lore, uh, Manifestation lore, largely because I already have had a Grave Tide from 3rd Edition for my Cruel Boys army, and... Uh, was able to get a Purple Sun from a friend, and source some Shackles, so like... It just kind of came together, and I got lucky. Um, so this is a great, really revealing shot of the store. Um, I think I just took this to send to friends and be like, oh, hey, the train is pretty good. Uh, and, the, you know, they have mats and good tables. Um, this is said Purple Sun proxy uh, that my friend Nick J, Nick Jackson, let me borrow slash have. And, of course, like, the first thing that happened at this tournament was I had this on top of my case and like moved it slightly and this is like a pound of 3D printing resin so it immediately fell and snapped the flight stand and I was just like great cool I, I borrowed this from my friend I painted it up real quick with the airbrush and I immediately broke it and now I feel horrible <laughs> so sorry Nick and thanks for letting me borrow your cool purple sun um 
All right, so let's get into games real quick. Uh, round one was Border War versus Hunter um, with his uh, ogres. So this was ogres in the thing everything takes for plus one to cast with the same, the good, the good lore <laughs> that everybody takes, uh, apparently. Uh, and this was a butcher with five gorgers, a butcher with five gorgers, and a reinforced iron gut unit, and a lead belcher unit. And then a slaughter master with a reinforced glutton unit. And the mall pot. There's apparently some debate over whether the mall pot or the um, whatever the other thing is, the mall pit, uh, is better. I faced both. Um, they both felt strong. I was more scared of the pit, I think, just because of my army is like small numbers of elite things with no ward saves, and like all of the mortals really scared me. Um, but this game, I I initially so here's here's a picture. This was this was maybe even turn one. Um, so I initially went up pretty significantly in turn one and was feeling real good. So turn one, I did take the flanks. I had first turn. I can't remember. I can't remember who won the roll off for priority. Um, Nick and Roger and I that weekend at the time were feeling like it was better to take first and be able to do your turn one tactic that you set up for. Um, but over the course of the weekend, I was, I was kind of convinced that like the double is still strong enough that you probably want to, um, you probably want to take second. Um, but yeah, I'll talk about it a little more. So I did take the flanks turn one, got my 10 points, um, because I took... He had kind of deployed in this corner. Um, and I had put stuff up in the sky. Like, I put Karzai and the Vindictors up in the sky. And so I just... I had room that I just dropped them down onto this point and set up so that if he sent in his... whatever, his Iron Guts, I'd give them minus two attack and be like, hey, I hope I'm going to live and then eat them. Uh, and then, yeah, so you, you can see how I set up. I think Andrasto was still in the sky at this point. Also, I'm going to zoom in on my, my Storm Drakes, because I think they're pretty. <laughs> um, and then his turn, so I got 10 points. His turn, he did take this piece of terrain. And I had a big brain play that worked out, because I hit the rolls that I needed. Um, I believe this was a place of power. So I was still at a net plus one to cast. Uh, to summon in his turn uh, because I have plus one to summon, plus one from place of power, minus one because it's his turn. So I spent a CP and I summoned the purple sun here. And so between like the dragons I'd put back here, I'd left, yeah, I'd left the dragons back here to like zone out gorgers from taking this objective back from me immediately because uh, I believe this is the one where your opponent's is worth five points, the one in their territory. Um, so between the dragon and then I summoned the purple sun in his turn to zone out the gorgers that he was going to just drop in and get this um, train piece from me for, like, free. Uh, so, yeah, I was like, ah, I'm, the, I'm amazing. I'm the king of Warhammer, right? <laughs> I'm the best. Um, just, you know, it's, again, brand new edition. Um, we, we had all, you know, we had read the manifestation rules a couple times, and he just wasn't thinking about the fact that, like, summoning a manifestation with a move would, would zone out the gorgers. So, we're all learning here. Um, so I was all, I was all big up on myself, turn one, and then I learned, then I learned about ogres. <laughs> um, so what is my next picture? Yeah, there's the aftermath. So essentially, essentially the way the rest of this game down, uh, game went down is, I went... I, I was top of two as well. I did slay the entourage and got seven points. So I must have I must have succeeded in slaying the entourage. I think I probably killed a gorger unit or something. Um, oh, I remember. All right, yeah. So basically, I believe what happened is the iron guts and gorgers. Gorgers came down. Iron guts and gorgers both went into like car's eye. And the um, Vindictors up here. Turns out Iron Guts at four attacks, and then you cast a spell to give them plus one attack. So even at minus two, they're still at three attacks each, which is terrifying on 
you know, let's see, that's 24 Ren 2, 3 damage attacks. That's still horrifying. Uh, and the Gorger, them and the Gorgers basically wiped the um, Vindictors completely that turn. And probably did some wounds to Karzai. And uh, what else happened? Right, so then I think Karzai killed like five or so Iron Guts back. Maybe the Vindictors even struck first. They hit their strike first roll. Whatever it was. I killed like I killed all but like three of the Iron Guts back. He didn't kill Karzai. He lifted the Vindictors unit with like the Gorgers pretty pretty handily. Um, yeah, and I think I think he maybe whiffed a little bit onto Karzai, but anyway. Um, so the Gorgers and like three Iron Guts were left here. I did slay the entourage onto the Gorgers. And I dropped Indrasta in, and I charged her in, and I made a huge mistake that basically lost me the game, I think. Um, so what ended up happening in that combat, he had three Iron Guts left, I, and he had like all of his Gorgers, basically, and I needed to kill the Gorgers for the battle tactic. Um, and I, I think Karzai was on his plus two attacks already from how injured he was. I think he had like... I think he had eight or nine wounds left at that point. Um, so I split attacks and I put three, I put three of the four damage attacks into the um, iron guts, hoping I could lift two or maybe all of them, maybe three, and then everything else into the gorgers. And I wiped the gorgers and I hit twice under the iron guts and rolled double ones to wound. So I did not kill an iron gut. And then the three iron guts that were left just smoked Karzai back because I was all at attacking, I wasn't all at defense like I was the previous turn and they just, they like spiked slightly maybe and did nine wounds to Karzai and just wiped him out and then the huge mistake was I was like, I was hemming and hawing about where exactly to put Indrasta and in a complete stupid turn I, I put her just outside of six of the <laughs> damn Iron Guts um so they wiped Karzai, and then since Karzai had wiped the Gorgers, Indrasta had nothing to do. She couldn't get into the Iron Guts. So she just sat there. So, like, even after they wiped Karzai off of, like, rolling double ones on the wound rolls, which was unfortunate and just, like, bad dice there, um, if I had had, if I had made sure Indrasta was tagging the Iron Guts if she was in three, um, she, she probably could have wiped the Iron Guts and then still been alive, right? I don't know what I was thinking, that I was, like, worried about him piling the Iron Guts over to Indrasta and, like, killing her instead of Karzai. Like, it was just, it was a real dumb moment. And it, it I, I think it lost me the game. Because then, in his turn, he just charged Indrasta with the three Iron Guts and smoked her. And then the 12, the unit of 12 gluttons just got into everything else and just annihilated them. Um, I had brought back five of the ten Vindictors to, like, try and screen out for the long strikes. And that, it didn't matter at all. That the, the gluttons just then ran over the rest of my army that was, like, in the center here. And um, and it was rough. <laughs> I was tabled turn three, I think. Maybe four. Um, no, I think I was, like, pretty much tabled turn three. So, yeah, turn two, I got seven. He got ten for do not waver. Then I did, you know, desperation tactic, take their land, and got six points turn three. And then... He just like scored out and I was tabled and dead. Um, so yeah, so if I hadn't, I could have, like knowing I had Andrasta to go at the Gorgers afterwards, I was, I was worried that the Gorgers, I was worried something was just going to like kill Andrasta before she got to fight and I should have been less worried. Um, so I, I maybe should have split like one or two more attacks over at the Iron Guts to try and kill them with Karzai. And then clean up like the one or two gorgers that maybe would have been left with Indrasta. Or I could have just not been dumb and I could have put Indrasta tagging the Iron Guts as well so that she would get to fight and clean up the Iron Guts. Because if the Iron Guts are dead and instead it's Indrasta sitting here alive, even with Karzai dead, Indrasta sitting here alive, no Iron Guts, then, you know, he's got 12 gluttons, which can't be everywhere, and then, you know, the characters. 
And maybe the characters can kill Andrasta in his turn, but like I doubt it. And then maybe Andrasta is like starting to pick up characters back here. Um, there's just you know there's there's more pressure. I have he has one less unit. I have one more unit. It, whatever. We don't have to get deep into it. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. Um, so that was the aftermath. This was um, the Iron Gods had gone and smoked Andrasta up here. You see the the gluttons ate everything. I was trying to do things with chariot. Gorgers were over here just doing tactics and things. Um, he did send he did send his lead belchers way into the back to get the ether wings eventually because they were just running around being dicks. Uh, and that was the game. So it was a good game. Uh, it was a learning game. I was I was incredibly traumatized having faced the twelve gluttons because holy shit, that is forty eight wounds of beef that just puts out. I mean it, they just. It felt like it felt like the foot ogres were casually lifting like anything they touched, right? It felt very good, um, and the twelve gluttons just, I I was, I was less worried about them than I probably should have been because I was like they can only be one place at a time, and then I learned that they can run and charge when they're near the butcher, and that they get plus two to run, so, you know, he had deployed. A, all cornered up like over here kind of castled and i was like great it's going to take him a long time to like get out on the board to do anything turns out when your your gluttons can move 13 inches and then charge <laughs> it's not they're not that slow um turns out they're very fast in fact um so yeah that was just that part of it was a learning experience um and gluttons are almost certainly drastically underpointed right now and are going to go up um so yeah, that was against Hunter. He won 35-25. Next up, I was playing Gordon um, with Feck. Gordon was an absolute pleasure to play. Super nice guy. Hope to run into them again um, somewhere. Uh, so their list was Flesh Eater Courts with Usheron, Six Crypt Horrors, the Arch Regent, 2x3 Morbeg Knights, the Vargulf, uh, and then the Cardinal and 2 by 20 Crypt Ghouls. Um, don't think this list is bad as Feck lists go, but I played. I just played a game yesterday against um, Rogers Feck, and he's been he's been trying to make it work. I think I played two games against his Feck now. Whatever. He was experimenting, trying to make them work, and I I think our conclusion is that they're just they're a little underpowered right now, like. There's good bones there. <laughs> there's, there's good bones and flesh and delicious things there, uh, if you're a cannibal. Like, whatever. What I'm trying to say is there's good stuff there. It's underpowered right now, but nothing, as, as, as Roger said to me, like, nothing is fundamentally broken and unplayable that they're going to have to, like, overhaul. There's just, they need, they need a little bit more. They need something. Um, so against Gordon... Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. This is the game I was referring to where this time uh, it was an 8-objective map, so I just kind of put Karzai on a flank and let him kind of do his own thing and, like, roll this flank up by himself. Like, three more big knights aren't going to kill Karzai. 20 ghouls are not going to kill Karzai. Um, so I ended up throwing him and the dragons up this flank while trying to avoid Usheron and, like, the crypt ghouls, or crypt horrors over on the other flank. I just had, you know, I had, like, the chariot over here to get take the flanks uh so this game again i went first and did take the flanks which i had set up for um so i did the ether wings over here the chariot over there whatever um i ended up turn turn one was big in this one um i had a <laughs> again i had a turn one play that i was like oh my god i'm so good at warhammer um i had i moved karzai up i moved the dragons up I got the charge with both of them, I think, onto the, um, well, that's interesting, <laughs> onto the Morbeg Knights. Uh, so they both, they both got into the Morbeg Knights, and then the dragons hit the roll for their strike first, and they also hit the roll for their rampage, which lets them move 2d6. Uh, and so the dragons basically went up to here, they got into the Morbeg Knights, and then this is the Arch Regent behind. So they hit the 2d6 move rampage and got into the Arch Regent and smoked the Arch Regent turn one. 
which is a huge deal because that's one of his aberrants gone. That's two casts. You know, that's less noble deed points he's getting, which is the backbone of the army. So I was I was feeling very good at that point. Karzai obviously just ate the Morbig Knights, and I, so I got I got more. So I got the full ten points because of that. Um, he did terrain. Um, so he, I believe, the next turn he already had six noble deed points on like Usharan or something. So I think he immediately brought the Morbeg Knights back and like got this terrain piece back or something from me. Um, so he got eight points because he didn't control more. Uh, and like the stuff on this flank moved up. I think the Morbeg Knights maybe killed the chariot. I think I had charged in the chariot. And, like we didn't kill each other. I didn't think it was too much of a risk to go in with it uh, and not get take the flanks. Um, so turn two, I did take their land. Uh, on a piece of terrain, probably, it was probably this one over here, since Karzai was still there, and cleaning up the Morbeg Knights for the second time. Um, so I got 10 again. He did attack on two fronts and got 10. So it's, like, pretty close at this point. Turn 3, I did Do Not Waver. <laughs> um, got 8. He did Demise, I think one of the death ones, and got 8. This was, um, this was Karzai continuing to uh, perform as anticipated he rolled all ones on his six attacks on his one attack profile that fight which i was just amused by uh yeah so yeah this is the aftermath of that turn one i took a picture because this was just from that previous from here the dragons in one turn ended up back <laughs> on his back line essentially which is bonkers um things can move turns out with like power through and like rampages like that things can cover a lot of board space in 4th edition. Um, I also put up the Shackles, which ended up just, like, honestly probably just hurting me. <laughs> they were just kind of in the way at that point. Um, these Vindictors kind of moved between these two pieces of terrain here um, to block up that center and kind of split the board. So, like, while the dragons cleaned up this flank, I was kind of splitting the board and keeping Rusharan contained over here. Um, yep. Ended up kind of looking like this. Again, Karzai had gone back to clean up more big knights for the second time. The dragons went over and, like, you know, attacked the faction terrain and smashed that. Andrasta had come down to, like, threaten Usharan, potentially. Um, I was surprised this game um, at how durable Andrasta ended up being, but I think that is more just that the Cryptors don't actually hit very hard at all. Um, they're fours and threes, ran nothing base two damage. Um, so they're just flat worse than gluttons for like significantly more points. And you can only, they come in threes, so you can reinforce them to six instead of six reinforced to 12. Um, and they only get rend if a character is nearby. Um, so the Vargulf was giving them rend, but they still like Indrasta just, I think probably all at defense and like just sucked it up I, I spiked some saves but like yeah she she then she just spent like a turn or two cleaning up the cryptors basically um which turned out to not be that hard which surprised me um so anyway so we're like i'm like two points up at the end of turn three i did slay the tyrant turn four on like the cardinal who ended up somewhere back here and got that for 10 points he did marked for death or whatever it is got eight um, and then the last turn is when, like, like I'd kind of, like, I'd been kind of in control of the board state, even though he was scoring well still. Uh, and then turn five was when, like, he just kind of finally ran out of gas, I think, and I was able to clean up uh, and get ten points turn five to his zero. So it ended up being 48-34, largely on the back of that, like, the last turn where it was ten to zero. Um, but yeah, that was a very good game uh, against cool opponent who I liked. Um, so I'm 1-1 at this point, and I get paired into the second Ogre player, and I was so salty about that. I'm like, first of all, I just, you know, it would have been cool to play, um, not play any duplicate armies, right? Like, because we're just learning the new edition. Um, but also Ogres and the Gluttons were kind of the big, like, uh, I don't know what, scapegoat isn't the right word but like the big 
the big scary thing where everyone was like, yeah, this is kind of clearly unbalanced right now and, like, is going to get a big point hike on, like, the gluttons. And this was, like, the max glutton list. So this was just Butcher, 2x6 gluttons, Gorgers, Slaughtermaster, 2x6 gluttons, Slaughtermaster, 12 gluttons. Uh, right, I thought there were, yeah, only one Gorger in this this one. And, of course, the Morbid Conjuration, and he had the Maw Pit, not the, not the other thing, the Pot. Um... So against this now, now now at this point, having faced Hunter earlier, I'm like, all right, I know I know the 12 gluttons are going to lift like anything they touch. I know it's actually way faster than I thought it was. So I was like, what? Like, oh my god. Like, how am I going to do this? And then this was the game that I was talking about earlier. Like, I regret being as salty as I was about facing 36 gluttons. Because I was just like, oh my god, like... <laughs> I thought we were all here to have fun and learn the new edition, and you dropped 36 gluttons on the table. I was just like, oh my god, this is this is, this is not going to be fun. I was bitching more than I should have. I was trying to bitch in a lighthearted fashion, but I was like, obviously a little salty about having to face the second ogre player with all of the gluttons. Um, but you know, I was going to try and I was tr- going to try and make a game of it. Um, and Andrew, this was Andrew, right? Yeah, Andrew. Um, Took my saltiness pretty well, <laughs> honestly. Um, he was a good dude. Um, he also, I guess, I don't know if he was talking to people who were at Tacoma or just hearing rumors out of Tacoma, but, you know, he told me, like, after the game, I think, um, he was like, yeah, dude, like, rumor on the street at Tacoma, like, Matt Rose is there, uh, and talking to people a little bit about stuff. He was like, rumor on the street is they pointed gluttons thinking they were a four-man unit, not a six-man unit, and so they might go up, like, 50% in points. Um... So, I mean, he was kind of like, yeah, I brought I brought the filth on some level. Um, but also, like, there was no you know, no need for me to be, be salty at this GT that I brought my big dragon to, and we're learning the new edition and the new rules and all that stuff. Um, oh, speaking of new rules, it felt like, felt like people were mostly getting stuff right, although, like, none of us knew the rules well enough to call somebody out most of the time, right, if somebody got something slightly wrong. Um... Like, I'd, I'd, I'd known a, I knew a couple things about the manifestation stuff that some people weren't clear on, like, stuff like that. Um, but, like, I totally cheated Gordon um, at least once uh, doing the shoot in the enemy phase and not targeting the closest unit. I forgot there was the closest unit restriction. So, like, I think there was one time where, like, I shot... There was one or two times maybe where I shot at Usharan with the long strikes when, like, ghouls were closer. And I didn't actually end up killing Usharan before, like... It didn't affect the game, but I was like, oh shit, I forgot that rule. I, like, told him afterwards, like, day two. I was like, Gordon, don't let anybody cheat you like I did. Like, I accidentally shot you when I couldn't have. Um, that was the big one that stuck out in my mind. Just trying to remember that, like, power through exists. Um, and things like that. Um, so anyway, so this game against Andrew, um, was bad. (laughs) It was... It was a it was a rough one, um, so I'm trying to remember what even turn this is. <laughs> My great finger in the camera, because I this was at least like two turns in. Well, anyway, so so basically here this game I was like real scared of the mall pit because I didn't want D three mortals getting pinged every turn on like my long strikes and cars I. And the whatever else, you know, it just feels real good into my army. Um, so I went first again. Uh, I did take the flanks for nine. I believe nine points is the most you can get on this one, really, turn one. Um, I forget why exactly. This is on shifting, shifting objectives. I forgot to mention, game two was on Scorched Earth. Game three is shifting objectives. Um... So I did flanks, he did do not waver, and just immediately got into some stuff and started killing it with, like, the smaller um, glutton units. I had, I had got... Oh, fuck. I was so sad. The turn one... Okay, I remember now. Turn one was... I was so sad turn one. Because I dropped the long strikes within range to shoot the mall pit and was hoping to take it out. And I was one save... I was one armor save short or you know one one wound roll or whatever i was i was one shot 
on the long strikes away from taking out the ball pit turn one, which would have been, I don't know. I don't know how helpful it would have been, but it would have felt good. Uh, and then he had, he had kind of bunkered up in his deployment zone. Um, and what I did, he had, he had kind of left space where I could have gotten Andrasta into the Slaughtermaster. And I was, I don't know, I was hopeful I could just bomb Andrasta in and kill the Slaughtermaster. I don't know what I was thinking because the 12 Ogres were sitting here and, like, even if, like, five Ogres piled in and got into Andrasta, they can probably kill Andrasta with that much. Uh, but it didn't matter because I dropped nine away, Andrasta charges 3d6, and I failed the rerollable 3d6 nine-inch charge, which just felt so bad. I think I did like four wounds to the Slaughtermaster with the spear. Um, so instead of getting in and killing the Slaughtermaster, maybe killing a few ogres or tying them up with Andrasta. Because I think I. No, I didn't find a sour. I'll, slight digression here. Um, one of the things that tilts me slightly and makes me sad about Stormcast is they get Finest Sour, right? Against. Over their whole army, like, it's not just a hero thing, units can use Finest Sour. Um, but you can't use it when you're in the sky. So I was, like, keeping Andrasta up in reserve and then dropping her in. And every time, just wishing that I could have finest houred her that turn when I wanted to throw her in. So I, I think I really should have, like, you know, she flies 12. I I was thinking I either should, I, I probably should have been dropping her somewhere a little cagier. And then being able to fly into the back line, like, the next turn and do Finest Hour when I send her in to try and kill something. Um, it's hard when things like Ogres are so fast. So I just dropped her in to try and kill stuff. I don't know. It was it was kind of dumb. Maybe I was playing a little on tilt or something, but I don't know. Um, so, yeah. Turn one, it was 9-9. Nine to nine. He just sent the 12 Ogres over and smoked Andrasta. He was like, I don't even want to bother. You know, I don't even want to worry about her. Hanging out the back line. Let's just overkill her by like 30 wounds <laughs> with the 12 gluttons. And he's fast enough to, to run back and still be involved on like, you know, turn three, right? Might take him two turns, but he's still going to be, be in the center when he needs to be. Um, so then I did waiver. I got eight points. He did take their land and brought the uh, gorgers on over here. I think he was going to take this piece. Um See, they're kind of back here. They went to eat the um, Lord Arcanum, Knight Arcanum. Um, didn't really, I don't know. I felt like I didn't have a good spot to hide him this game. Like, I wanted to be next to this place of power, but then my army was kind of over here. And I just didn't place him well. He got eaten. Um, yeah, and then I was like, this was, I think this was end of turn two. So then turn three, we, we like, I didn't even write down the tactics. <laughs> Essentially, like, from over here, 30 inches away in two turns, he was into Karzai, right? With the 12 gluttons. Like, the ogres are just disgustingly fast. It's, it's gross. It's gross how fast the ogres are. Uh, I, was, I was so tilted. <laughs> I was like, great. You, you sent your big unit over into the far corner to, like, deal with my one distraction unit. It's going to take you so long to get back over there. I knew at this point from the game against Hunter that that was not the case. But I was still like, oh, my God. Like, you covered, like, 30 inches of ground. You got 24 ogres into my little general, you know, dragon vindictor blob here. And just ate, ate everything, right? You just smoked everything. Um, turn three. Uh, I, I still got five points somehow that turn. And then he, you know, he scored 10-10. He just scored it out. So he got, again, um, I think this happened to be both games against Ogres. Like, turn three, I was tabled. Um, the 12 Ogres just put out... The, the 12 Gluttons is just a disgusting amount of attacks. It's essentially... I mean, if they get the plus one attack buff, too, right? It's 50, 60... It's like 61 attacks at rend one, two damage. Like, <laughs> that's that's absurd. Um, so it's, it's not only is it like the highest amount of wounds I think in a unit in the game right now it's also probably one of the highest damage potential units in the game as well because even without the buff you can get to over 100 damage with them on threes and twos right just <laughs> that, that, that was the honestly that was probably the biggest thing that was sending me 
um, to just salt land was um, like the crypt horrors. I was saying this to Roger last night, actually, after our game. Like, it feels like the horrors could be fixed if they just had native ren one, and then like maybe the hero nearby gives them plus one to wound, so they go to choose to wound. And you're jumping through hoops to get to the glutton profile, right? Like right now you're, you're jumping through hoops to get to worse than the glutton profile because the horrors wound on threes. Whereas the entire ogre army, all the foot ogres, wound on twos. So it's 50 attacks on fours, twos, ren one, two damage, and that's just like gonna lift <laughs> almost anything because you're gonna all attack, go to threes, twos. It's just like an absurd output on and like a huge amount of wounds. So uh, they're obviously gonna go up in points and like there's gonna be a balance pass on everything. Um, but it's just, man, it felt so bad to get eaten alive by 20, you know, 36 gluttons from halfway across the board in, like, a turn, um, and I was salty about it, and I'm sorry, Andrew, <laughs> you're a good dude, uh, don't have to apologize for playing strong things ever, um, but I was just like, no, <laughs> I, I gamble that I'm playing an underpowered thing probably, and I'm facing the overpowered thing, and I'm sad. <laughs> Uh, so I went and got a fruity drink with uh, with friends at dinner and soothed my sorrows playing Dune Imperium and having a, a couple drinks. And that was fun. Um, this was day two. I asked... Oh my god, where's the roster? Oh, I don't want to get your name wrong. Carrie. I think I actually had that right in my memory. I asked Carrie if I could get a picture of her cosplay. She was playing Night Haunt, so... Had a whole Olander getup, which was rad. Um, and then game four, uh, I traveled all this way to play my friend Nick, Nick G, with his Nurgle. Uh, as happens, occasionally, I'm glad, you know, it at least wasn't like round one or something stupid, and I didn't have to play him and Roger. Um, so poor Nick. He's just been chasing this Glotkin dragon for years. He just wants Glotkin to be good, and then he missed the, like, six-month period where Glotkin was actually good at the end of third. And, like, the day before lists, was, lists were due, he was apparently talking to Roger about his list, and Roger was like... They played, like, a practice game, and Roger was like, don't don't take Glotkin. They, like, worked up a whole list for him to take, and then at the last minute, he just <laughs> he switched it to taking Glotkin again. And we were just like, Nick, why? Why do you do this to yourself? I mean, I was also, I was literally, I was chasing the literal dragon with Karzai, wanting him to be good, and he's never the optimal choice. And Nick was, was chasing his dragon with Glotkin. So he also had the, we'll call it big brain play, of um, not putting anything in the Glotkin's regiment. Uh, so the Glotkin was the general. So he decided he thought it was more important to not have any good, like, he didn't want to have targets for the plus one, plus one against things in the general's regiment. Uh, so he just forewent any of the bonuses and was just like, Glotkin's it. If you want to attack him, go for it. Then he had a great unclean one, which I actually, I, I do like the great unclean one. Uh, he had two plague drone units, plague bearers, and then Horticulus and two beasts of Nurgle. Um... It wasn't an awful list. I think there, my my brain totally just like locked up there for a second. Um, I was just thinking we did we did a lot of like list building and debrief and stuff on the car ride home. You know, we had three or four hours to get home. Uh, so I was just thinking like we were we were messing with Nurgle lists on the way home and like there I think there are decent Nurgle lists. It's just they don't involve the Glotkin for five hundred fifty points because turns out you can get a lot of other things for five hundred fifty points. Um, so we were playing on Battle for the Pass. Um, so this was another one where the one in your opponent's territory is worth five, so one, two, two, five, with a max of six, um, for objectives. And this is the one where it's kind of diagonal deployment. Um, so yeah, I kind of deployed, I put cars, I started him on the board and kind of was planning to take this bottom flank and then fight my way up. Uh, and I had the chariot up here, just trying to get, um, up here to get a uh, take the flanks right and uh deal with you know i don't know deal with stuff dragons were over here um so basically turn one he went first again i don't remember who won priority rolls i should have that should have written that down um 
he did seize the center turn one and just moved up his, you know, his beefy Nurgle things, his two giant monsters and the Plague Bearers. Uh, I did take the flanks. I got seven points because I did not take this objective back. Um, this was the first time... I think this was the this was the first time I was playing from down early, being the underdog. Um, and that extra command point felt so good to have, I gotta say. Like, it really felt like if you... Like, going down one or two points, maybe, in the first turn is not a bad place to be, necessarily, because of the underdog mechanic, as long as you can fight out of that. Like, if you're going down four or six in the first turn... That's that's a real bad place to be. That's a lot to fight out of. But I don't know, one or two points down, that, that didn't didn't feel bad. Um, the extra CP helped a lot. Uh, at least it felt like it. Um, right. So I'm down. The next going from turn one to turn two. This was the first game of fourth, I think, that I finally took the risk of taking the double and not doing a tactic. So I took the double. Um, right, because turn one, I had, I thought I had a chance to pick up the Great Unclean one with Indrasta. I sent her in. Um, I did, like, I think I did 15 wounds to the Unclean one, and then he healed, like, five of it, because he diseased me, and he had the he had the thing where if he's in combat with something diseased, he heals D6. So he, like, immediately undid a lot of the damage, and I was just, like, I just went into, I was in panic mode, because I was, like, like, fuck, if I don't take the double, he, he's going to kill Andrasta back. The Unclean One's probably going to heal again a bunch. Like, I'm just going to have wasted my first turn putting stuff into the Unclean One and, like, didn't get it, and it's going to heal, and I'm going to lose Andrasta, and it's going to be feel bad. So I was kind of in panic mode. And I was like, I'm sure if I take the turn, like, I can I can get the Unclean One. Um, so where's my next picture? Right. So... That's ba I mean, basically, that's what happened. I got... This was, this was the turn I referenced earlier where, like, I finally kind of got to shoot everything at something. So I shot all the stuff I had into, like... I think I even made... Did I, I think I killed the Unclean One in shooting, actually, before I even got into combat. Um, I may have gotten into combat with the Unclean One. I don't know. Whatever. The moral of the story is, I killed the Unclean One with the double turn... I got into the rest of his stuff. I probably did some wounds to Glotkin as well. I just, I, I, I took a, I took good enough control of the center, killing the unclean one, that it felt like I was in a good spot. So I got six points because I also, I edged onto this, um, I edged onto this objective to take his. So I got the five points for that plus the, you know, I got the max six for objectives. I think he had, he had a he had a like a nine or a ten inch charge with the Glotkin to counter charge and like maybe deny me that objective. Um, he would have taken that or kept it, uh, and he failed it. So like, the double turn ended up being worth it. He did take their land uh, for seven points in his turn two, and then he didn't double me back. So I got do not waver and got ten points. Um, and I think I picked up the unclean one that turn with Karzai and the little dragons and like Andrasta and thing. Like, you know, you, you can see I had all my, all my big stuff left. Um, he did ordained charge and got, he did get 10 points turn three, but it, it was, it was basically over at that point. Um, I'd gotten all his big toys. I, I basically cleaned up most of his army. So we, mm, basically talked it out from there and it it was very it ended up being close like he was like oh you 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 know you killed my big guys you know the unclean one the and the glock and you've got me i was kind of like i think you still have a lot of play left if you want to play it out because like he had horticulus and the beast up here he had the flies like he was gonna kind of be able to be a little cagey and get some points and so like talking it out like it ended up being 43 37 to me um, so, like, it, it, it did end up being very close. It was not a blowout. Like, he thought it felt like a blowout after I got the double and killed the unclean one and got, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it was definitely not a blowout. It was, like, it was a game. Uh, it was closer than it felt. So then I played 
Well, this is, <laughs> we went across the way to a brewery, which was called, oh gosh, what was it? Cobble. I'm just going to look it up. It was like Cobble Street. Brewing? We're doing it live. We're doing it live. Cobble House. There we go. We went to Cobble House Brewing after lunch. We walked way too far. We walked like a mile to a subway for some dumbass reason. Um, so then we, we had limited time to get our, you know, a beer after, after walking the mile to the subway and back. Um, but we got a beer. That's, that's Nick and Roger. Way to, way to make your stream debuts, guys. I hope you don't mind. Um, and a very good beer. So that was nice. Uh, and then I played Cole's I don't know, Deepkin the last round. Um, this was Volturnos, Leviathan, 3x10 Thralls, Eidolon of the Sea, uh, 2x3 Ishlian Guard, and 10 to Marty Thralls. So, or sorry, one of, the, one of the ones up here was Reverse. 30 Thralls, 10 Reverse. Big turtle. Um, I didn't have felt good. Um, Roger had played a different IDNF list with eels, and so had Nick, I think. Um, and we're very, we were all very confused talking afterwards about, I guess the six eels picked up the great unclean one, like, what Nick felt like very trivially, and looking at their profile, like, we couldn't, looking at the war scroll, we just couldn't figure out how they did that much damage, uh, <laughs> But uh, you know, it, maybe they had, like, spiked on their, like, little mortal thing or something. Or just rule. I don't know. We were all very confused. And we're like, did, did his opponent get a rule wrong? Like, how, how, how did those eels pick up an entire great unclean one in, a, in like, a turn on a charge? Um, anyway, that is neither here nor there. Uh, Cole was good. Cole was apologetic when he lifted my whole army off the board. And I was like... Don't be sorry. <laughs> That's what your army does. You know, you did your army did what your army does. Uh, I hadn't played Ideneth yet. I hadn't played Ideneth in like three years, even in third. Um, so turns out that uh, having your whole army strike first for a turn is very strong. So he just kind of played the game he needed to of holding back and staying safe until he got the he got the turn one two double um i yeah so basically i felt like oh no nope, you don't need to see my stupid face anymore uh <laughs> although i'm forcing you to i guess now um basically I, I i went a little risky with the way i had set up in my turn one um like this i don't think he really knew how he was gonna crack but like Andrasa was kind of out there hanging out because I I was a little wishy-washy. I wanted to get some damage on the turtle and maybe like just throw Andrasa in and try and take out the turtle. And then I realized it has a five up ward <laughs> and I was like, there's no way Andrasa is going to take it out. So I was, I was kind of wishy-washy on what I was doing here. But essentially what happened was he got the one, two double. What he had done on turn one, I felt like if I had gotten the turn... I probably could have... It would have been a much closer game. I don't know if I would have won, but, like, it felt like he was not in a good spot if he didn't get the double. Like, it felt like he was... felt like he made moves kind of counting on the double, and he got it. And so it worked out for him. It. I think if he didn't get the double, it would have been a very different game I had play there. Um, but so he did, he did a bunch of damage to me on the double. Um, again, I, I went up eight to four after having gone first in the first turn. I don't know if that's even good now. Cause I'm like, he was just getting those underdog CP. Um, he got six points to my eight turn two, but again, he did, he did enough with the double and then he was in like, sorry, he did not lose enough going into turn three when he was going to have strike first for me to weather that storm. And so he got the prio. I didn't, I didn't get the double back, um, was another thing that hurt, but obviously it doesn't hurt that much because he had basically killed my whole army at that point. Um, and then turn three, he's all strike first. So he just sends everything into Kar's eye. That was like the only thing that was left. And 
just eats Karzai. Um, he he basically ate the rest of my army turn three because he was strike first. He got every, you know he got like both eel units into my little dragons. He got a bunch of he got the turtles and shit up into my big dragon, and he was all strike first. So his whole whole army got to go before I did, and he just killed everything in my army. And I was like, oh, cool story. All right. <laughs> Turns out I need to learn about facing Ideneth. Uh It was a good lesson. <laughs> Again, like he was a little apologetic about it, but I was like. It's what your army does. Like, I'm not experienced against your army. Like, there's nothing to apologize for. Like, you gotta pilot your army to success. <laughs> don't don't be don't be sad about that uh, or apologetic about that. So you know, he just then he scored out 10-10, um, and it was 16-40. Um, I don't know if I saw any actual like 50 point games where everybody got all 50 points. I got close the one time where I got like 48, I think. Um, I guess I could look at the placings. Oh, well, I guess Michael, who came in first, got a 50-point round one. Uh, oh, Roger got a 50-point last round. It's all right. There were a few 50-point games, but they were few and far between. Whereas, like, in third edition, yeah, I, I think there were only two 50-point games where some, one player got all 50 points. And compare that to 3rd edition, like, that is a huge change. Like, 3rd edition, if you were dropping a tactic, like, you were doing, like, y you were not at the top tables if you were dropping a tactic any more than, like, 5 or 10% of the time, right? Like, you were getting all your tactics, you were scoring the max points you could if you were doing very well in 3rd, you know, very often. And now it's like, you know, this is... The first place player got 50, 44, 39, 38, 44. So, like, those those couple games were pretty close. Nothing was, like, huge, huge blowouts. I mean, you know, whatever. Maybe, maybe 50 points was a blowout, but, like, these later rounds, I you know, he wasn't scoring max points. Neither was second place. Neither was third place. Um, did feel... It always feels a little weird when one of the people helping run the tournament plays in it. And like places and gets a prize um absolutely not alleging any misconduct it just always feels a little weird um so i hope like like i said i want to i want to come back up there at some point and play another tournament like it was a great tournament um all the people there were cool uh i hope that next time like they have it a little more locked down in terms of like having a to getting a player pack out like kind of having you know <laughs> it won't be the very start of the edition next time where the rules are out like a week for the tournament i like i said i think that was probably most of it um, so I'm looking forward to going up there again. Um, I might even just go up there for one day, honestly. Like, it's not that far. Um, yeah, everybody I played was pretty cool. Everybody I didn't play also seemed cool. Like I said, Ben was a cool dude. Um, Seth, the other dude helping run the tournament, was cool. It was a great store. Oh, my gosh. I wish I had more pictures. Um, but, yeah, the Fabricator's Forge uh, up in Coropolis, if you're around and haven't been definitely go um i was super impressed they had a lot of board games i actually bought dune imperium while i was there um and they had a ton 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 of like basing modeling painting stuff there was a whole room that was just painting supplies modeling supplies basing supplies i got a hand drill and some brass rods so i can finally pin things um i was super tempted to get could have, I could easily have dropped $100 on just, like, basing supplies there, um, and I resisted. So I was proud of myself. Uh, but, yeah, it was a good tournament. Um, Roger, this was not my friend Roger. My friend Roger was Roger Young, uh, who placed the best out of the three of us at sixth uh, with his Slave to Darkness army. Um, slaves seems real good. I want to look at his list real quick here and just show that. Um, I guess I could also look at the top list. I was surprised, I think I said at the start of the video, I was kind of down on OBR after playing them once, uh, twice. They just, they're different. I don't know why this isn't loading. There we go. Uh, OBR, they're just different than they used to be. Um, Archon maybe seems like not the play, and I don't own Catacross, and Catacross does seem like the play. Oh, great, that didn't even load. Thanks. There we go. I was going to see. Sorry. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, right, so the winning list was Catacros and a bunch of Death Riders. And Xantos. And Assault Mason. Um, yeah, one, one by ten, four by five Death Riders, and then three characters. And Catacros... I, Roger, play, Roger played him um, with his slaves and sounded like the most impactful thing was just Catacross having the 18-inch bubble instead of 12-inch bubble um, for the relentless discipline stuff. So instead of a 50, or instead of a 12-inch radius bubble of 5-up ward, you have an 18-inch radius bubble of 5-up ward. Or plus 1 to wound if that's what you want. Uh, so suddenly all these Death Riders and everything is feeling real um, durable. You can be more tricksy with that, you know. That, that apparently just felt very impactful. Uh, so good job to him for coming in first. And then a real quick look at Michael's list. Or not Michael, sorry. Roger's list. Uh, Roger was running the Gaunt Summoner, Unit of Rapteryx, 6 Varengard, and then a Sorcerer Lord, 10 Chosen, and 2 by 5 Knights. Everything Mark Nurgle. Um, and said that the 10 Chosen with the Gaunt Summoner just felt fantastic every game. Uh, so that is definitely something I'm looking to be running. Um, honestly, my list will probably end up looking pretty similar to this. I, it feels like feels like six Varengard, ten Chosen, and the Gaunt Summoner are like a very solid core to build around, and then you can kind of season everything else to taste. Um, so I'm thinking about like a Braxia and the Su Gaunt Summoner in a two drop, um, with like a couple Furies and like maybe one Knight unit, uh, or I guess maybe no Knights you can afford there. Anyway, it this feels like a very good core to start from and iterate from. Um, like I said, Roger said the, the Chosen with the Gaunt Summoner getting dropped out within seven if you get the spell off felt amazing. Like, he was having Chosen in people's faces turn one along with the Varengard turn one like every game. Varengard, as always, are amazing. Even though Knights are better now than they were in third, which I was so excited about, uh, Varengard are still just even better. <laughs> Varengard even better than they were, and so are still better than Knights, which is kind of sad, but um, yeah, good job, Roger, for, uh, you know, putting in a good showing for us Marylanders. Uh, I ended up coming somewhere down, uh, right, Nick and I came 19th and 20th. We were both 2 and 3, um, which felt fine, other than I said, you know, being salty about Ogres. Um, this was really like a learning GT. Everybody was learning the rules together. Everyone was very just friendly and understanding and flexible. And yeah, we were all learning together and it was a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, that is it. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about fourth in another video. Maybe I'll talk about doing some list building with, um, I don't know, just, just my practice games or just general fourth thoughts. Uh, we'll see. But yeah, thanks for listening. Hope you all have been doing well and enjoying 4th edition, and see you all in the next video.